Well, good day, Salem. I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett, and I'm delighted to be with you today sharing some really great news and information about what's happening at the city of Salem. Let's start with parks. The city of Salem is now welcoming reservations for outdoor activities in our public park system. We have a wide range of areas up for reservation for socially distance events, athletic tournaments, weddings, and reunions. Find more information on the city website. As always, the city of Salem is focused on community preparedness uh, for a natural disaster or regional emergency. To keep up to date on best practices and learn about needed supplies and materials in these circumstances, the city's emergency preparedness manager is offering a free virtual lunchtime series on this important topic on Zoom and YouTube. The dates and topics are found using the web address that appears on your screen. For today's interview segment, I'm happy to have Salem City Council Member Chris Hoy. He represents Ward 6 in Northeast Salem and also serves as Council President and President of the Salem Housing Authority. We'll talk to him on the topic of homelessness and his work with the Mid Willamette Valley Homeless Alliance. Well, Councillor Hoy, thank you for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate it. You serve as chair of the Mid Willamette Valley Homeless Alliance. Tell me just a little about the group and what you all are doing. Well, good morning, Mr. Mayor. I'm the vice chair of that group. And that group uh, was formed a few years ago to really start looking at homelessness on a regional level. Rather than just focusing on individual jurisdictions, rather than just focusing on, focusing on the city or the county, this is folks from the city of Salem, the city of Kaiser, Monmouth, Independence, Marion County, Polk County, the school district, our nonprofits, and we've come together to look at evidence-based ways of dealing with our homeless problem here in our region. Does, does it feel like uh, the city of Salem really is at the heart of the solution? Well, you know, because of the, we have the numbers, we have the most, yeah. we have the biggest population, we have the biggest population of homeless people, and certainly the focus is here because that's just where the services are. But this is truly a regional issue, but we are definitely at the center of it. The thing that is talked about the most is uh, managing and ending homelessness. Can you, where are we on that continuum? <laughs> that's a great question, and that's something that uh, is a constant conversation. So when we talk about managing homelessness, we're talking about the people who are living on the street right now. They are living in some pretty bad conditions, and we need to do all we can to help them get into a better situation. And so we do a lot of things, and I'll get into that in a minute. But So we talk about managing it, which is t helping people get, in, uh, get into a better circumstance today. And then ending homelessness is really about the long-term solution, getting people into permanent housing of some sort that will meet their needs. So the question is, do we put re more resources in managing or in ending? Obviously, you want to go for the long term, but we have that immediate humanitarian crisis that really needs our attention as well. Is there a silver bullet? No. Okay. No. The, the one, I, I guess if, if I were to say there is a silver bullet, it's, it's uh, working together, meeting every individual where they're at, yeah. assessing their needs, and developing an individualized plan for each individual. There's not one solution for everybody. That's a, I, I think that's just a great description, I think, from my perspective as mayor, of what we're doing. Is, do you see it that way as well? You know, I really do. We, we are trying to develop what I call a, a continuum of services. We have, in terms of the managing homelessness, we, we're, we have managed camping. We have the pallet shelters, which are a little bit a, a step above camping, where you have an actual structure that'll keep you in, inside in, with heat. We have, we're developing more shelters which is a place if you just if you choose to live outside but the weather just isn't uh, isn't conducive to it you can go to a shelter for a while and then we have uh, more long-term solutions that we're we're working on as well <coughs> what do you see on the horizon is there something new that we haven't uh, haven't done that you see coming well we've we got a lot of things on the horizon and um, I think that we need to we need to more fully develop our managed campsites. Certainly, that's an area we've just dabbled in it. We started a great pilot program out at the fairgrounds uh, a few months ago. It was a short term, very discreet time period, but and that turned out to be quite successful. I know you visited the, the area as w well as most of the counselors I visited as well, and it was such a professional organization. Yeah. Uh, it was a partnership with Church at the Park, and you, you walked into the pavilion, which is a huge arena. 
Yeah. And it was, you could hear a pin drop. It was, it was, a, it was yeah. a great, clean, wonderful place where people can go. And the, th the thing about having a managed campsite that is so important is that people have a place to put their stuff. They have a yeah. place to belong. And so it gives them an anchor so they can go to services. They can go, to, they can go get a job. If you have to worry about your stuff being stolen every time you go to a doctor's appointment or to a job, you're not very likely to want to go. Because yeah. if you come home and you don't have a, you don't have a bed, or a pillow or food, why would you want to leave? And so what a managed campsite does is it gives people that, that first kind of anchor so they can really start building into something better. You know, uh, I think that's just a great point. In fact, uh, as I recall, out at the fairgrounds, we saw uh, really a substantial percentage go to work and begin to move out of homelessness because they could go to work, put together the money and the references they need to get a place to live. People look at this problem, and, and you and I both hear this a great deal, get emails about it. What can I do? I'm just an average citizen. What can I do to help with this? Well, that's a great question, and it's one that we get all, a lot. And really, there, there are, I would say, three things that you can do that it would be really impactful. And there's one thing that I'm going to ask people to not do. The three things you can do. You can donate to a local nonprofit, and that's either money or uh, goods and, and yeah. the donation to the nonprofit is really important because they know what people need and they can distribute it in, a, in an organized and really uh, uh, well-run way. Uh, what's not good is to maybe stop at an individual camp and try to donate things to individual people. While that might seem like a good idea, what it really does is it creates a lot of trash it creates uh, safety hazards, maybe for you, maybe for the camper, maybe for traffic, because there might not be a place to stop safely. It's just not a good idea. We really want you to funnel those through a local nonprofit, and the money will go to, your, the, to helping people. Rest assured with that. The other thing that you can do, and I think that this was one that gets overlooked, is you can make your voice heard. You can talk to your city, your county, your state and your federal officials and lobby them for more resources for homeless services, for mental health services, yeah. and for alcohol and drug treatment services. Those are the things that we need that are going to really help change this long term. And you, people need to get their voices out there. It can't be just me. It can't be just you. Right. Uh, we've got to get our voices out there. And uh, if everybody is calling their county commissioner, their state legislator, their, their member of Congress, and their, their, senator, their U.S. senator, that can be very impactful. I think people don't appreciate how much power they have in their voice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it really uh, has been my experience, I know as well as yours, it's, it's an all hands on deck. That's and right. uh, really, we really hope you can uh, join us in this effort. Uh, it's a long-term project. Uh, Councilor Hoy is providing the kind of leadership this community expects on this issue. So thank you for joining us. I hope you'll take a look at the various uh, links we're providing at the end of this uh, discussion and take advantage of your, the opportunity for you to make a difference in these people's lives. So thank you for joining us.